Herd health care is always a top concern for beef producers, and controlling costly diseases has a definite impact to the bottom line. But staying ahead of disease isn't always easy. Brian Baxter visits an Oklahoma veterinarian who's helping his clients use a combination of good management practices and animal health technologies to keep their cattle healthy. It's fall in Oklahoma and Dr. Pete Streck knows that this time of year is a busy one for his clients. He also knows it's a stressful time of year for their cattle. Typically around here we have a lot of farmers with cattle. So in the summertime they devote a lot of time to their crops and in the wintertime a lot of time to feeding cattle. The stress of weaning is always significant on the young, naive cattle. And also this time of year, you gotta think about our weather pattern. We're needing that rain for wheat, so we have wet days and we have hot days. Wet days and hot days, back and forth. Weather changes is, is tough on them weaning calves. And uh, just the process of getting yaked away from mama and sticking a pin and sit there for 30 days and see how you like that new feed you've never had in your life. When they're stressed, we just have uh, problems with, you know, diseases and all kinds of stuff like that, pneumonia. As cattle are stressed, the risk of them contracting bovine respiratory disease significantly increases. BRD is bovine respiratory disease. It's also called chipping fever or just, just pneumonia. Uh, most commonly occurs right around the weaning time, and there are a couple reasons that occurs. One is that that's when calves' maternal immunity, or the immunity they get for their mother's colostrum, is decreasing. The other thing that happens about weaning time is the weather changes. A lot of cows calve in the spring, which means they uh, are weaned in the fall when temperatures can be warm during the day and, and cool and wet sometimes at night. So both the decreasing maternal immunity and the fact that they're stressed from weaning contribute to the incidence of BRD. There are a couple reasons cattle are susceptible to BRD. One is just the anatomy and physiology of lungs. Cattle have a lower lung capacity than many other species. Well, if you think about it, how big a cow is and how much emphasis we put on that rumen to make pounds of meat, we're actually pushing them lungs forward and when we get that rumen big and full. And uh, we haven't selected for big capacity lung animals over, we've selected probably against it a little bit over the years to, to get a bigger rumen to make more meat. So we really haven't stressed lung size in cattle whatsoever. BRD is, is such a significant issue, not just if you have one sick animal and he gets over it, because you're going to lose weight during that sickness period. You're going to lose feed intake, lose weight, lose performance, uh, and then if you ha have some chronics down the line, those cattle are not going to go and grade very well at all at the feedlot. They're not going to perform when they get to the feedlot at all, at all well either. Preventing BRD is a difficult task, but there are practices producers can use to decrease the risk of animals contracting the costly disease. We can never prevent it all, but we can do a whole lot to help if we get on better herd health programs. Cattle handling really impacts it. You know, the more you holler and scream at cattle, the higher stress they get. And when those steroids get up in that stress, they decrease that immune system. So if we can keep that stress level down, therefore we're keeping your steroid level down during that cattle handling and processing and loading and all that, we can really help keep them cattle calm and gentle. It, it helps their immune system significantly. There are several things producers can do to manage the incidence of BRD. One of the things they can do is use a low stress weaning type management system. And that could be a fence line weaning system where the cows are placed on one side of a secure fence and their calves are on the other side. Generally in three or four days, those calves and cows will start to migrate away from each other. And studies have shown that the incidence of BRD in cattle that are weaned in a low stress manner um, it, it, the incidence of BRD is much lower. The other thing producers can do if they don't have control of the weaning, let's say you're buying cattle through an auction facility or through a livestock market, is manage those cattle in a low stress way when they get to the backgrounding facility. There's some nutritional things we can do through providing high quality trace minerals. There's some uh, vaccination things we can do. In addition to offering sound advice on herd management, veterinarians play a critical role in treating sick animals and it's important to contact your vet right away once you notice symptoms of BRD in order to get a treatment plan in place. One important thing is to be aware of what the signs of BRD are. Runny nose, slow to come to the feed bunk, maybe an occasional cough, droopy ears. Those are the kind of the classical signs. Be prepared to act very quickly when you see signs of BRD beginning in an in a operation. 
so if, the faster we can treat the animal, the quicker they're back on feed, the quicker they're performing and, and making more pounds of meat for us. So when, we, when I go to sit down with the client and decide what animal block are we going to use, first we're going to talk about what bugs are we going to target, what microbials are we going to target. So we look for an animal block that's broad spectrum and it's going to treat all those. So we look, first we look for a broad spectrum and then we start to look for duration. The longer that antibiotic is on system, the short, that's the longer we don't have to get them back in the chute. So if you have an antibiotic that only lasts three days and you have to get them back in the chute three days later, that's more stress. If we can get one that can last a week, we feel like we're have antibiotics on board and don't have to mess with them and keep them quiet in the pen and let them recover for a longer time. Knowing that time and money are important to his clients, Dr. Streck has found Zactran from Beringer Ingelheim to be an effective tool in treating BRD. Well. First off, I'd like to talk about what we're treating, how we're going to treat it, and then the client wants to talk about well, how much it's going to cost. So then you have to get into this economic standpoint of how you're going to treat these animals and not break, break the producer. And that's where we've kind of settled on Zactra in the last year. Uh, it's, you have your long duration effect, you have your multiple organisms affected against, and so you're getting more bang for your buck. Before we were just using uh, kind of a simple program, just uh, a cheaper drug, you know. Uh, we started using the Zactrin, uh, just seemed like it had a little more kick to it, a little longer lasting. Uh, just, we got more for our money, really. Before we were pulling a lot of cattle, fighting them for, you know, quite a bit. With the Zactrin, they seemed a lot less pulls and they just took off on the feet better. Zactrin has decreased our pull rates significantly in the first two weeks and we're also getting a lot less chronics that our, so our clients are getting to turn cattle out on wheat pasture a lot quicker than they're used to when they're using a different class of antibiotic. If you look and start penciling out, it really does pencil out to save you time and money. Well, Zactrin has several characteristics that makes it very effective. One characteristic is its duration and Zactrin has a label duration of up to 10 days. We can use Zactrin with the confidence that it'll be on board, be at blood levels that are effective for at least 10 days. The other thing that makes Zactran effective is it's effective against the four major BRD pathogens, Mycoplasma uh, bovis, Histophilus somni, Pasteurella multocida, and Mannheimia hemolytico. So it's effective against all those microbes. So when, when a producer asks me, how am I going to use Zactran? If you're treating a sick animal with Zactran, I like to tell them, give them the Zactran, give them the correct dose underneath the skin, and then wait five days before you give anything else. I know it's going to be really hard for some of them calves that look sick, but you have antibiotic on board. We don't need to be loading them up again with a different antibiotic and, and re-stress them through the chute. So if you can give them five days, you're going to see a response uh, out of that Zactrin. So when we're talking about Zactrin and the, the correct dose, it's a two mil per hundred pound uh, dose. That's not the lowest per dose on the market, per, per weight, and it's not the highest. So I believe that the clients are going to be more accurate using that because it's a middle of the road. When you have a product that's one mil per hundred, 110 pounds, if they miss that animal's weight by 50 pounds, they could significantly overdose and waste money or significantly underdose that product. With the Zactran and the easy gun that they give it to you, it has the weight on that gun and the mills at the same time, so it simplifies it for the producer and you have less error, I believe, in, in getting your dosing. Reporting from Oklahoma, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman.